And the title of the sermon today is An Outward Focus. Um, so we're going to talk about some things today, and I will just tell you a lot of times we have got to get out of the mode where we're just focused on ourselves. We've got to get out of the mindset of just focusing on just the Abundant Heart Community Church. Um, he says this is Jesus speaking to his apostles, and he's getting ready to commission them to do some work. Um, the 16 says, and then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee and into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus you know, he died on that cross for us. He shed, he shed that blood that we might be saved. And when he, when all is said and done, God had given him all power in heaven and in earth. He is the source of everything. It's everything that we have and everything that we're going to be. He has all power. So as he's going to commission the apostles to go out and to do his will, he is also going to empower them to do that. Anything that God calls you to, God will empower you. Any talents and gifts that God has given you, he will empower you and give you the skills and the knowledge to bring those things to fruition. God never leaves you powerless. He is always with you, especially when he's ordained your life, because he says, I have nothing but thoughts of peace towards you, and there is an expected end. So if there's an expected end, God has to be with you from beginning to end until you achieve your purpose in life, until you accept your calling. So just as he has a calling for the apostles, because 12 men set the world on fire and turned it upside down and changed the landscape of things, changed the narrative of the world. You can do the same thing. But we have got to get out of looking at ourselves and start looking outward and have an outward focus. So many times we're only worried about what can I get. And we don't look upon our neighbors and our friends and what they need. We don't look at our community and what we can do in our community to make a difference. We need an outward focus because Jesus had an outward focus. Where would we be today if God had had only had an inward focus because he chose a nation. He chose the nation of Israel to be his children. What if God said, that's my only focus. All I'm going to worry about are the children of Israel. Where would we be today? What salvation would we have? What if Jesus said, I'm only concerned with my brothers and sisters that look like me. I'm only concerned with Jews. That's who I've come to deliver and that's who I've come to. What if Jesus only had an inward focus? But thank God, God had an outward focus. Thank God that Jesus had an outward focus. Because of that, we are able to be sons and daughters of God. So he is commissioning the apostles to go out and have that outward focus. And he tells them, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Everything we do should be to glorify God. Everything we should do to be in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So because we are born again, we are no longer our own because we were bought with a price. We were bought with the price of Jesus' blood. He died on the cross for us. So our, our life, our gifts, everything that we have should glorify God. And everything we should, we should acknowledge him in all our ways and not lean to our own understanding is what Proverbs 3 tells us. 6, 7, and 8. And it says he will direct our paths. But we have got to acknowledge God and give him the glory. Because he gave Jesus the power, and Jesus it will empower you to do the things you can do. The money we have, the roof over our head, the clothes on our back, the food on our table, the talents we have, the skills, the knowledge we have, all of those things have been our gift from God that he's blessed us with. And we've got to start using those talents and walking in our calling, whatever it is you're passionate about. Start walking in that, but give God the glory for it. Thank him for it. And use that gift as an opportunity to allow somebody to see the God in you so that they might receive Christ. You are the only gospel, and sometimes you're going to be the only Jesus somebody to see by the life that you live. And that is what the Great Commission is all about. We don't have to go door to door, because let me tell you, in this day and age, Jesus, he says, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess before this world comes to an end. 
There's so much information out there now, radio, internet, TV, everything. The gospel is all over the world. And you say, and I'm not telling you not to witness, I'm telling you to witness where you are. I'm telling you to be a living testimony in the lives of the people God has placed in your life, on, in school, on the job. And I'm not telling you to be so holy that you know earthly good. I'm telling you, just allow people to see the God in you. You don't have to beat people over the head and, or even tell them that you believe in Jesus. They'll know by the way you act. They'll know by the way you, your conversation. They'll know by the way that you love people and the way you hold your head high and how you respect people and how you behave. They'll say something is different about that person. And when they ask you, you can simply say, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He changed my life. And you can open that conversation. But God is always with you when you put him first. And he will empower you to do things. Because all power on heaven and earth was given to Jesus. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, if it was not so, I wouldn't tell you. But he said, I will leave you a comfort of the Holy Spirit. But he also said something else. He said, you will do greater things than I did. Jesus raised the dead. So I can't wait to see what some of you can do, what you're going to achieve in life, because Jesus said you're going to do greater things than he did. But we have got to be like Jesus and be about our father's business. And that is glorifying him, lifting up Jesus that men might be saved. And he said in 20, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. He said, teach them what I've shared with you. Jesus said, I call you friend. Because I have shared everything with you that my father shared with me. We are not ignorant of anything. We have the story from the beginning to the end. We know what God says. And we know what God is capable of. But let me tell you, you have got to start having an outward focus. The church has to have an outward focus. Because a church and people that are only concerned about themselves, they start to die. You start to wither, and I can tell you, look at the children of Israel. Look at the scribes and Sadducees and Pharisees. They were only concerned about themselves. So much so to the point that where in the book of Revelation, it tells us that of the nation of Israel, it talks about in Genesis and Deuteronomy and Numbers and Exodus, only 144,000 of millions Enter into heaven that of God's people, of the 12 tribes. Not talking about the Jews of the day or the Israelites of the day, but the ones that we read about, that Jesus walked with and talked to and ministered to. There were millions of them and only 144,000 enter into the kingdom of heaven. But it says the doors were opened and then you saw a multitude come in. That multitude was because God had an outward focus. He thought about you. He considered everybody else. When he told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and that his children would be like the grains of the sand. That was us being counted in that number because God had an outward focus. But you look at what happened to the scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees. They didn't receive Jesus. They denied him. They were so selfish and concerned about what they had and trying to keep the power that they had, the prestige they had, the clout, and hold on to the power that they had. They didn't want to share it with anybody. They didn't want anybody else to have the knowledge that they had. They died. They didn't get to go to heaven. You have got to start having an outward focus and not just be concerned about yourself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We've got to start doing good in the household of faith. We have got to start allowing people to see the God in us and sharing that gospel. He goes on to say, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. He says, I'm going to be right there by your side. You want Jesus to be with you? Start sharing the gospel. Start allowing people to see who you are and how God has changed your life. Start having an outward focus. And then when you start having an outward focus, see, when you're focused on yourself, you can't see Jesus. When you're just focused on who you are and what you want in life, you cannot see Jesus. 
that old saying, you can't see the forest from the trees. Standing right in front of it. You can't see Jesus if you're only worried about yourself. You have got to start seeing an outward focus. And when you start to have an outward focus, you'll find that Jesus is with you. And he said he'll be with you till the end. He will walk with you, talk with you. If you agree to walk with him, he'll be with you and he will empower you to do some things. But you have got to stop thinking about yourself. He says for us to take up our cross and follow him. We have got to surrender our will to his will if we want to see the greatness in us come out. And if you want to be able to deliver the greatest gift to somebody, you've got to stop looking at yourself. And you've got to start seeing things the way God sees things. Ask him for spiritual discernment in your life. So ask him to remove the scales from your eyes so that you can see the trees, so that you can see the forest. We need to see Jesus and stop looking at ourselves. Because when we're only concerned with ourselves, we're not looking on the things of our brothers and our sisters. There are people hurting. There are people that need the word of God. But sometimes we're so caught up in self, we don't allow Jesus to use us. And when we're caught up in self, we can't see Jesus. And then we wonder why God is not moving in our life. Why God is not delivering us from the things that we need to be delivered from. Because you have an inward focus and not an outward focus. Because an outward focus means your eyes are stayed on Jesus. And when your eyes are stayed on Jesus, you are minding the things that Jesus wants you to do. He said to do, teach them all the things that I've commanded you to do. And we need to have that focus. We need to do exactly what God has called us to do and not lean to our own understanding. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through, I think it's 48, 47. Um, we're going to talk about the early church and what the early church was like. And why the early church was so successful. Why it grew the way that it did. And it was because they had an outward focus. The children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. They were two miles away from the promised land. They wandered because they had an inward focus. And they, because of the inward focus, they could not see God. And they complained and they whined all the time. And they were two miles away from the promised land. But if they had had an outward focus, being focused on God and what God had called them to and walked in that calling, they were two miles away from the promised land and they would enter into it. But God, so be it, God killed everybody over the age of 20 because they were blinded, because they were so worried about self. They were worried about their own needs. They were starting to deny the power of God in their life because they were focused on self. When you only think about yourself, you start to deny the power of God in your life. You start to cripple the power of God in your life because then you start talking about what you can do and what you need and whining and complaining. When God says, have I not delivered you from this? Have I not done this for you? Have I not healed you from this? Have I not been right by your side every step of the way? But when you start to have an inward focus, you begin to be blind to what God has done for you. You have got to have an outward focus because when you have an outward focus, you acknowledge and you can see what God has done for you and how he's blessed you. And then you want to share that good news. You want to tell somebody how good is God, that he's a way maker, that he's a healer, he's a deliverer. He tells us in Acts chapter 2, let me see where I'm at. He says, 42, and he says, And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. There's some things in there that we need to learn. God says, forsake not yourselves to assembling yourselves together. The early church went from house to house. They came together. They stood on the word of God. It says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. We are to stand on the word of God. We are to teach our children. We're not to deter from it. No matter what the world says, we are got to stand on the word of God and receive it in our hearts so that we won't sin against him. That's one of the things that we have to do. And he says they, we have to fellowship with one another. 
It says in breaking of bread and in prayers, we have to pray together. We have to pray for one another. Pray without ceasing. That is an outward focus. The church had an outward focus. They fellowship with one another. They prayed for one another. They stood on the word of God. And that's what we need to do. Verse 43. He says, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Fear is the beginning of the knowledge of God is what the word of God teaches us. Healthy fear is respect for God. They had respect for who God was. Some of us have lost respect for God. The way we talk to him, the way we act, the way we behave before our father. It says, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Jesus said we will do greater things than he did. Some say the gift of healing is dead. That's a lie. That's not what the word of God says. But healing is still there. Prophecy, all of these gifts, all the things that Jesus did, we can do. But we have to ask the question, why can't we do them? Because we have an inward focus. We're only concerned about us. We're more worried about us getting the glory than giving God the glory. We're more worried about us looking big and being somebody than being worried about somebody else and doing something for somebody just because it's the right thing to do. The Bible says, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. But some of us, he says, but if you don't, he said, if you want the praise of men, he says, that's your reward. But it says if you don't let the right hand over the left hand doing, God will reward you in secret. We don't want what's in secret, though, because we want to be seen. But if you start letting God be seen in your life and through you, ooh, what would happen? It says the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. We can do some things. We can speak life over some things, but we've got to stop having an inward focus and start having an outward focus. He goes on, says, and, and, they, and all they believe were together and had all things common. We got to stop looking at our differences. And we got to start looking at what we have in common. We love God. There ain't but one race, and that's the human race period, because that's what God created. We've got to get out of our isms. We've got to come together because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to come together in him. He says, I'm no respecter of person is what God says. He says, now we have to live in this world. We have to deal with it in this world, but we've got to have an outward focus on him. And when God is our outward focus, he says, I'll fight your battles. He says, vengeance is mine. We don't have to worry about the world. Because Jesus said, all power has been given to me both in heaven and on earth. But are you in Jesus? Are you resting in him? He says in 45, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Now, this is not a command for all of us to do this. So don't get it misunderstood. This is what God laid on their hearts to do. But there's a principle there. The word of God says to do good unto the household of faith. God blesses you that you might bless somebody else. But if you won't share what you have, that is an inward focus. And then you will start to die. We are to have an outward focus. We are, he tells us, we are to be like a candle, but not to take the candle and put it under a bucket. Who not to do that? Then what good is that candle? It doesn't cast any light. You are the light that some people will only see. But if you refuse to share that light, hmm, what will happen? And I'm going to close with something to bring it all home. Because when I say that you are a blessing to other, God makes that clear. He makes it very clear that you're, sometimes you're the only Jesus that some people are going to see. He says, we are to be joyful givers. 46 says, and they continue daily with one accord. We have got to get on the same page. We've got to be in agreement with God and period. That's it. Be in agreement with what the word of God says, period. We have got to get on one accord. If 
there's discord, there's no unity, there's no peace. That comes about when you're only focused on yourself. See, we can be on one accord when we have an outward focus, because then it ain't about us. I tell people all the time, we could come together as a church, pool our money and our resources and talents, and we could build everybody a 4,000 square foot home. But the problem would be who would get the first house. And then after the first house was built, then after the first house was built, the problem would be those people that were in that house would stop contributing. Then this cord would start to fester and start to run rampant, and then there would be chaos. But there, we could do that, truthfully. We could do that. But it takes an outward focus to be able to achieve those things. But we selfish. He says, they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They were one accord. Break bread with one another. Get to one and know one another. That is an outward focus. Iron sharpens iron. He says in 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. Woo, when you have an outward focus, you start to have favor with all people because you're <coughs> because you're serving God. And God said he'll make your enemies your footstool. He said he'll prepare a table for you. Oh, there's my hint. He said he'll prepare a table for you. And it says, <coughs> and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Because they had an outward focus, God added to the church. Your focus has got to be an outward focus. So, read this to you. Romans 10, and then I'm going to go to Proverbs. Romans 10 and 14 says this. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Sometimes you're the only preacher that people are going to encounter. Sometimes they're only going to hear the word of God through you. And God says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sometimes you're the only preacher in somebody's life. Sometimes you have got to have an outward focus because there's somebody in the need of God's word. But if you have an inward focus, you won't give them the word. And I'm going to leave you with this in Proverbs. Proverbs 11 and 30 says this. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. You are the righteous because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are the righteous, and it says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The tree of life is Jesus. The fruit you give is Jesus. And if a person will receive that fruit, they receive Jesus, and they receive life. He says you are the righteous, and the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. But if you hoard what God has given you for yourself, You start to blind, be blinded to God in your life. People can't see the Jesus in you, but you have what they need because the fruit you have is the tree of life. More than what is talked about in Galatians, love and long suffering and patience and kindness. Those are the fruits of the spirit. But he says the righteous, their fruit is the tree of life. But you got to have an outward focus to give them that. But then he goes on to say something else says, he that winneth souls, hmm. he that winneth souls is wise. Are you wise? Do you have an outward focus? Will you give somebody the fruit of the tree of life? Because that's your fruit that you bear. Have an outward focus. Stop being selfish and stop thinking just about yourself. God bless you. We're standing. You can come by letter. You can come by Christian experience. You can come as a candidate for baptism.
just come. You can come.